Welcome to one of the most exciting videos that I've had to make for you guys in quite a while. How to overclock your monitor using the NVIDIA drivers on enabled cards. So we have a GeForce GTX Titan in our test bench here running on a 30 inch 2560 by 1660 hertz monitor. Now the thing about 2560 by 1600 monitors is that they only really exist as 60 hertz panels because the manufacturers only release them like that. Uh, also, it's a bit of a DVI dual link limitation, we're led to believe, that allows you to only drive 60 frames per second or 60 hertz. It's kind of the same thing in this context, but it isn't, um, at 2560 by 1600. So, we'll have a seat, and I'll show you guys a cool little trick. All I have to do is go into the advanced settings within the display configuration here, go to monitor, and boom! What are these options? Not just 60 hertz, but 70 hertz, 80 hertz. Now, normally, in a situation like this, where you hook a monitor up to your graphics card. The graphics card reads the codes on the monitor that says, I am a 60 hertz monitor, I run at 60 hertz, like a robot, that's how they would talk, that's how a monitor talks. Um, so what it does is it reads that information and then it locks everything down, so it would only say 60 hertz, so why do I have additional options? What I've done is I've gone into the NVIDIA control panel on an enabled card, I've gone to change resolution, and I have created myself customize some custom resolutions here. Now like all overclocking, this may adversely affect the reliability of your monitor. You are overclocking the electronics inside the panel to speed it up, to get more frames per second, more, well no, not frame, well you are getting more effective images per second. Why don't I say that? Images per second, because then it's kind of the same thing. You are speeding it up, so it can adversely affect reliability. It could adversely affect your warranty if the manufacturer found out that you did that, or if you know, you're honest with them about it. So all you really do is you try things. So you go, okay, I'm going to create a custom resolution. Now I tried creating one at 90 hertz. Like any overclocking, there's no guarantees that things are going to work. So you can put in your horizontal and vertical pixels, your refresh rate, your color depth, your scan type, progressive is what you guys are going to want to use, and all of the timing stuff I would just probably leave to uh, automatic. Now you can see here, 90 hertz isn't going to work. While it's, this is waiting, I'll explain to you guys why you want to do this. So if you buy a high-end graphics card, maybe you buy a GeForce GTX Titan, it's probably going to run all your games at higher than 60 hertz, and unless you buy a 3D monitor, you can't get one that runs higher than 60 hertz unless it's a CRT these days. So why am I running games at 100 frames per second if my monitor can only show me 60 of them? That's why you might want to overclock your monitor, because that way the monitor can actually show you, in the case of this monitor, it doesn't run 90, so it went black, so we go, okay, cancel, we're not going to create that resolution, and instead we are going to stick with the ones we have. I've gone as high as 82, so that's what this one does. Rather than push it right to the limit, I would go ahead and I'd go back into my advanced settings and I would apply that 80 hertz profile. It makes a tangible real world difference in the fluidity of the motion and unlike 3D monitors, which are TN panels, this is a VA panel. You could do it with an IPS panel potentially. Again, no guarantees how far your monitor will go. Some will go further, some will go less far and you don't see any image quality degradation. So with a TN panel, you're going to have uh, very shallow, no, it's not hooked up to anything, but you don't have very deep colors, you don't have very accurate colors. By overclocking an IPS or a VA or some other kind of PLS panel, something along those lines, you can end up with a monitor that still looks good and delivers more fluid movement than a 60 hertz monitor can. So that 100 FPS or 80 FPS that your video card is capable of outputting isn't going to be as bottlenecked by the monitor because of this overclocking option. So I say kudos to NVIDIA for allowing the enthusiast to do this by unlocking it at the driver level. And I think that pretty much concludes this video. Thank you for checking out this I was about to say unboxing, but it's unboxing of monitor overclocking. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.